Well, PJ, we want to thank you for coming on our show today to talk to us about your basketball career. Um, I, I really haven't heard you talk about much about where you're at, what you're playing. I mean, are you still overseas right now or what's going on with that? Uh, no, I'm actually coaching. I'm going into my third year of uh, head coaching of a high school down in Houston, Texas. Oh, okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. I know a couple of years ago you were on one of the radio shows here, and I know you were in the bus traveling, so I didn't know if you were still playing or if you retired from that. Yeah, I retired from that. I, I, that, was, uh, that was actually my last season right there. Oh, okay. So uh, I got a question for you because I know that I believe – you started under Mark Turgeon, right. and then you ended under Greg Marshall, right? Right. Yeah, I believe that. So I want to go back to the Sweet 16 when you guys played Tennessee. Okay. And had you guys – had Tennessee have gotten beat to Winthrop, you guys would have played Greg Marshall. Yeah. And I hear a lot of people saying you guys were scared. You, were, you guys were rooting for Tennessee to win that game because Winthrop was a dangerous team. Um, what was your guys' mindset on that? Were you guys hoping for Tennessee to win that game? Well, <laughs> being perfectly honest, uh, we was all at Coach House, I think, during uh, the bracket reveal. And as soon as we seen the bracket, we all looked to each other like, yo, we're going to the Sweet 16. So I don't think it, <laughs> we, it didn't matter who was going to play. We felt we were the better of the three of the four teams that was there. Um, so we, were, we had a, a gang of confidence before we even played Tennessee. Yeah, because I – I still remember sitting in my high school room and you taking that shot right up there by the, I don't think it was the wing. I think it was right up on top and you took that three point shot to pretty much ice the game or put us ahead by three or four points. So, I mean, it was just exciting to see you out there on the court and playing with Ryan Martin and all the, or Jamar Howard and all those guys. So it was a fun filled 2006 season. Now I want to get to the whole Mark Turgeon to Greg Marshall transfer. Um, what is it like to go from the coach that recruited you to play for a coach that comes in after the other coach leaves? Uh, it's a, it's a different situation and different, um, for everybody, the, depending on where you at in your career, you know, as a freshman is, it might be easier because you're about to have three years with the new, new coach, you know, as a sophomore, you kind of figure your way out, figure, you know, what you want to do. If you want to stay, if you want to go, you still have two years, to leave, you know, if you leave, you got two years if you stay. You know, as a junior, you're like, man, I hope this guy has my my best interest, you know, in and hope this guy actually cares about me. And then me, at my point as a senior, I was more of I have nothing to lose. You know, I can't I'm not I, I had put my name in the draft, but I knew I was already coming back to uh to school. But so I was just like, hey, it's gonna be what it is. Um I know if I support the coach. Everybody behind me will support the coach, me being the best player and the leader of the team. So I was just I was just bought in already. What what was it like playing for uh Turgent and then switching over to Greg Marshall? Like uh how different were their philosophies? Oh, it was night and day. Um it was night and day. It was, coach Turgeon is more he was more of a, you know, strictly business type person like we probably had three conversations maybe outside of basketball uh and and practices you know was short get to the point you know uh we doing what we supposed to do and we doing the right thing we don't have to be here all day um that was coach Turge's approach and then you go to coach Marshall who's a more of a people person more of build that, that relationships with you you know and stuff like that and then our practice go went from hour fifteen minutes to almost two hours, you know. Yeah. So it it was it was night and day. Oh yeah. Now let's um, go back to your playing days at Wichita State. I know when I ask this question, you're going to say the NCAA tournament, but I mean, outside the NCAA tournament, what's what's the funnest thing about playing in college basketball? I mean, is it your teammates? Is it traveling, getting to see places? It's. It's all of that, man. The perks that you get, you know, uh, like I, I said previous once before, after we made it to the Sweet 16, when we came home, I got to I got to be a judge of a national Hooters competition, and 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 that was fun, and and just stuff like that. We we 
being with your teammates is probably the most memorable thing you have because you build that bond with so many guys and, and y'all go through so much together. Um, but my personal favorite would be the fans, you know, having a cool chant whenever I touched the ball, checked in the game. <laughs> I did anything. I thought that was really, really neat. Um, and I kind of kept that with me even in today's, even to, to, to this day. I'm not going to lie. The first time the fans did that, Mike Kennedy had to let people know on the radio that it's not booze, it's coos. <laughs> so that, was kind of, that was kind of exciting to Love hear God. that on the radio too. So, What was your uh, favorite Wichita State game? Um, Like just like at – game just period or just like the biggest yeah at home we'll do a home game and an away game my favorite home game would have to be my freshman year southern illinois game um because they used to they would beat up on us all the time and they had won the conference like three times in a row and you know me being a freshman i had no clue of none of that so i was just <laughs> out there <laughs> out there playing and i ended up playing really really well and hitting a big three kind of to seal the deal and, and the funny thing about it, I was wide open right in front of our bench, and I heard Coach saying, don't shoot it, don't shoot it, don't shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> so I still shot it anyway, and uh, it went in. So uh, that would probably be my most memorable home game. And away game, for some reason, I love playing at two places in our conference. I love playing at Bradley, and I love playing at Creighton. For yeah. some, some strange reason. I think Creighton just having that big gym, that big uh, – Court give you kind of like that NBA player feel. Uh, so I, I love them two places and kind of the same with Bradley. Yeah. Now, because I know the Valley was actually strong back when you guys played. I mean, the Valley, because that 2006 season had, I believe, four or five teams in, even 2007, 2008, you know, the Valley got three or four. And then after that, it just seemed like the Valley just collapsed. But mm -hmm. now with Wichita State and the AAC, do you think that's really helping the recruiting for Greg Marshall, the recruiting? Um, it the level that you uh the level that you're you're at is a different type of guys that you deal with when in recruiting. So when you when we were mid major level guys, you deal with guys, you know, kinda like me and Ramon Clemente, JT Durley, you know, Tere Murray, kind of guys that's not that pretty much had to work for everything, you know, uh had to fight, scratch, and claw for everything that they got within their careers. And then as you move up, like I see it now in the position I'm in. Uh, when we was a – my first year here, we only won six games. And the guys I could get was like guys that was, you know, kind of like had nothing else to lose. Then the next year we went to a state championship. We lost. But the caliber of guys I got are higher. So now I'm, got, I'm getting guys and stuff that's, you know – a lot of people are pulling at them, yanking at them. They can pretty much get anything in, in life that they want. So it's the same with coach, with, uh, with the way the recruiting is going. Now you have guys that's three stars, four stars, potentially five star guys. Those guys are different from a two star and a one star, a really good player that's unheralded. Yeah. Now I got to ask this question because I know Matt Breyer, he's, I forgot what college he's at, but I know he's. Okay. In yeah, so he's down there. So um, if you were, I know that you probably love your team there in Houston, love the high school team. But if you were to get a call saying, hey, can you come be an assistant coach for this Division One school, would you tell them, can I finish out this season and start next, or would you leave right away to take that money? Man, it would. it's funny that you asked that because right now <laughs> I'm in a really good situation with my team. We got a chance to make a – uh, we got a slim chance to make a national title run. Um, so it would be a really, really, really tough decision. It had to be some really, really good money for me to leave. Like, I'm in a really good spot. I could kind of do what I want, call the shots how I want to call them, um, and pretty much run everything how I want to run it. So it, it would have to be a really good, really good offer for me to just pack up and leave and, and, and start doing some college uh, assistant work. Yeah. Now, are you teaching at the school, too? Well, you know, with the pandemic, I was the PE teacher. Uh, and with the pandemic, there's no PE. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> not. <laughs> so right now, I'm not, I'm not teaching. Um, and I taught the first year, and last year I was just a coach in PE. But this year I'm just uh, 
the coach and the AD. Now, are they going to allow fans at your guys' high school? Yeah. So, Texas, down here in Texas, we've been, we're open up 75%. So, everything is pretty much a go. You just got to have a mask on and get checked, like, when you come through the door and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, that's – the high school's here now in Wichita. I mean, they finally decided to open up for fans, but it's only, you know, amount capacity. Yeah. So, uh, now I do know – Man, I had your cousin's name in my head, and I can't remember it. He's playing at South Carolina. What's his name? Is he your cousin or your brother? Cousin, Jermaine Kuznar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is he a, was he a four-star recruit? He was three, three-star three. recruit out of uh, Chicago, East Central Chicago. Now, did he, did he look up to you as a player, and you're the one that kind of got him going? No, it's a funny story. Uh so me and him always kind of communicated through family, but we never officially met until his senior year in high school. He was at an AAU tournament in Vegas, and he was sitting on a bench, and I walked through the gym, and I was like, my cousin played for this team. He played for Mac Irvin Fire. And I said, man, I, I wonder which one is he? And then it took me all but two seconds to realize, realize which one kind of looked like me. So I walked up to him. I said, hey, man, I'm your cousin. He was like, hey. Yeah. But we always communicated on social media and stuff before because he played basketball. And I was like, you know, you got other Kuznars out here that can really play. And, you know, so we kind of just built our relationship like that until we officially met. Yeah, I mean, I got to say, I loved watching you out here. My dad would buy me a ticket when I was in high school. I'd go out with them, and I told him I just came to watch you play. I mean, don't <laughs> get me wrong. I loved watching – you know, Ryan Martin, Kyle Wilson, all those guys, because, I mean, that was one hell of a team. I just – I feel like that game against George Mason, I don't know if you guys were nervous in that Sweet 16 game because I just feel like, man, those first two games, I told my dad, I go, we're going to go to the Final Four. And then yeah. all of a sudden, I think nerves just hit you guys or something. I don't know what happened. Man, it was, it was a bunch of stuff, man, just a bunch of stuff behind the scenes that, you know, it happens in, in basketball. And we were ready. We was – we always when we when we seen the other teams on the other side of the bracket, like once North Carolina lost, and you know you have shoot around with UConn, uh, Jordan Mason. It was Washington, UConn and Washington. Uh, you know we shoot around, then Washington shoot around, Jordan Mason, then UConn shoot around and stuff like that. And we we were so confident that we could be, beat Jordan Mason, and we also knew that whoever won the game out of Jordan Mason and us would likely go to the Final Four because we felt the other two teams wasn't disciplined enough to beat either one of our teams. You know, we, we was uh, really tough defensive teams and we played so disciplined. So we both knew that we had a chance to make it to the final four. Well, Hey, I mean, you know, if a coach ever hits you up to come assistant coach here, we would love to have you back here in Wichita. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I come, I come back all the time. I, I love it. Uh, it's just only thing that's keeping me from staying out there is the weather. You know, oh, yeah. it, hey, it's it, nice here right it's now. It's going to be in the 80s this week, so. Oh, man, this might be <laughs> a week I need to come out. <laughs> yeah. Well, Peach, we I, want to thank you for coming I on. Have one today. Oh, hold on, Adam. Real questions. quick. I have a question. What did you learn from Greg Marshall and Turgent that's helped uh, shape your coaching philosophy or even your life? Oh, that's a good question. From Coach – from Coach Terzin, I learned a lot of X's and O's. Uh, we were so uh, we were so so uh, good, like executing and, and knowing when to screen and knowing how to screen and knowing how to set this up. And it was it was such a, a surgical approach on offense of how we we play, you know. And that's I actually still teach that offense, the same offense that we ran, and that's how you know we are pretty successful. And then with Coach Marshall, it's just I learned, you know, defense, how to be tough, how to make kids the best version of themselves, how to to do both, balance being personable and then being able to be hard on, on the kids and making sure knowing that they still love you at the end of the day, you know, and stuff like that. So, I mean, life lessons, both of them taught me a bunch of life lessons. You know, they took me, both of them took a chance on me, a kid from that come from nothing you know, and, and put the ball in my hands and, and gave me 10,000 people to, to follow me. So I, I, I appreciate both of them for that. Um, but, I mean, there's so many things that they taught me. Yeah. I mean, you played under 
two really good head coaches. I mean, mm -hmm. Turgeon and Marshall, you couldn't ask for any better than that. So, but we want to thank you again for coming on our show. Best of luck to you and your high school. Um, go get that state championship and hopefully COVID doesn't ruin your guys' season and your yes, guys' sir. season. Ho hopefully not. Yeah. All right. Thanks, BJ. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's going to do it for our sports talk for you. Go ahead and subscribe. We will be on next time here in a couple of weeks. Hopefully we can get Dick Vitale on our show. So that will be nice to have him on our show. We will have more shows coming up, possibly another NFL show coming up here in the next day or two. We'll talk about the Chiefs getting upset, boo, and the whole Dak Prescott ending his season and what will happen going forward with the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott. So that'll be it. We will see you guys next time.